and welcome to Tuesday's Tips. Summer and hopefully the heat will be over very soon. Many of you have sent in questions that I think may be a benefit to the majority. So in this session, or the next two sessions, we'll be answering questions that we have received. The first one from CB. Does the resident have to sign the gross rent change, 50059? Well, CB, that is a twofold question. Yes, if it affects the rent or utility allowance of the resident, and no, if it does not affect the rent and the utility allowance. The second question from LV, does a resident have to sign a corrected 50059? The answer is yes. The resident has to sign all five nines that are submitted to tracks, with the exception of the gross rent five nine that we just mentioned previously. The 5-9 signature says that everything on it is correct, so if there's a corrected one, it needs to be signed. The third question from HP, can the owner agent destroy the move-in third-party income verification after 90 days of the income report being received? My manager told me to do this. Well, HP, the answer is no. The move-in third-party verification should remain in the file for as long as the resident is a resident at your property. The fourth one is from Marva. Well, Marva, you ask, will a lump sum child support payment that is received year after year at the same time be counted as income? The answer is yes. Lump sum child support payments and lump sum unemployment payments are counted as income. The next one is from Mark, the fifth one. If the owner agent verifies the asset at move-in, do they have to verify it again at AR? I'm told not to verify again because the verification is good for two years. Is that true? Mark, it is not. If you have a HUD project-based program, it is not true. That's all the time that we have for today, but tune in next week for additional questions from our viewers.